This is only like the third attempt to start. I kept pushing the button and it didn't record. I'm Naomi from Bell Stitches Pirates. I, uh, this is floss tube. I didn't write it down. I think it's four, might be five, five, I think. Anyway, it's a channel about cross stitch and occasional randomness. I am going to start with finishes slash fully finished. Um, I'm in the middle of finishing my wedding sampler and I have a dilemma. Let me stand up and grab it. So I got myself a lovely gold frame and photo matting that's this lovely uh, burgundy and it's got a velvet texture on it. And I, following the Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch uh, tutorial, I stretched and pinned my sampler. Um, but I think I got a batting that is a little higher loft than Elizabeth and can stitch because this has a lot of bounce in it. Um, and when I, as I juggle this, when I stick it onto the frame, Unless I were to take the glass out, which that isn't going to happen. Uh, this piece is done with all dinky dye silks. So it's not washable, not truly, um, but it's currently not flush with the back of the frame. When I was pinning that piece, I also had another piece to finish, and that was the little uh, saying I had been making for my nephew. And I pinned the sampler first, and then was like, hang on, this is really, really thick. It's squishy, but it's thick. So I had um, applied bat the batting to the foam core with some spray glue and let it dry. And so I had the piece for this to be pinned prepped. And because of how thick it was, I'm like, I'm gonna try pulling half the loft of the batting off. So I literally, this is the amount of batting that I tore off of the start writing piece. And it still had quite a bit of loft in it. You know, it's, it's nice and padded. Um, once again, I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to put the closing piece in, but I wanted the little, bracket here. So I just took heavy um, craft paper and folded it. You know, it's a little homemade. You can see little bits of glue residue I may be able to wipe off. Um, I just use super glue to hold down the paper to the edge of the frame. Um, unlike my frame for the sampler, this one is one of those that has the really teeny tiny narrow metal edge on it. So there's not a lot of edge that you can affix the backing to. 
Anyway, I based on how this worked, I think I have to unpin the wedding sampler, pull off some of the batting, you know, thin it down a bit, and then repin it. Not a problem to repin it. Um, it's just a little frustrating. Uh, and then I need to cut the inside out of the mat and finish the piece. Um, so that's my finishes, um, or nearly finished. Um, I have a few more pieces that I need to finish for my nephew. All right, so let's return back to the rest of the schedule. Um, I've not been very good at this, but I did want to give uh, some shout outs. Uh, I've been probably a couple days of the week binge watching um, Floss Tube. Usually Saturday is my binge watch day where I just put it on and say, show me everything that's been uh, show me all my channels with updates and then start looking for, did I miss somebody new? So the last couple weeks, uh, I've watched Mama Loves You, GB Michelle. Um, she's a floss tuber in Wales and she's got an amazing sense of humor. She, the last couple of videos had a titmouse camera um, she had a nesting pair of birds and they had eight, eight babies in their latest bunt, clutch, brood, whatever we want, whatever they're called. I do not know birds. I know that baby chickens are chicks. That's the extent of my bird knowledge. Um, I also watched Mischievous Stitches, Lancashire Stitcher, uh, Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, uh, specifically her uh, framing, uh, pinning, lacing, was there lacing? I don't think there was lacing, but her, her pinning and mounting uh, tutorial. I'm probably going to say this name wrong. Imer Quinn, E-I-M-E-A-R. She's in Ireland. Uh, Lynn X Stitches Creates. Nisi Lynn, uh, where I learned the history behind Juneteenth. Um, I'm not complaining. I like paid holidays from work, but when there's a new holiday that goes into effect and nobody was paying attention to the fact that it was going into effect and find out, you find out at five o'clock. You got off work at one and you find out around five o'clock when they call you and say, don't come into work. And when that's the opening call from your boss, don't come in to work tomorrow, your first reaction's, what's wrong? <laughs> um, and for Nisi Lynn, living in Texas, she has had Juneteenth celebrations around her community as the long as she can remember and just presumed that well this was something that was nationwide and then she found out it wasn't uh, and watching her explanation of the history behind Juneteenth was helpful in being grateful that we were finally recognizing 
a milestone that's kind of not talked about in history, which is that slaves in Texas, which was the furthest slave-based area, did not receive notification that they had been freed by the president until two years after he signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And so June, te June 19th, I forget what year she said it was, 1867, something like that, was when they found out, she said it was two years after the signing and I have to go look up the dates. Two years after they had been freed, they finally received notification from the government cavalry riders that they were free. And so that's what we're truly celebrating is that there were people who lived in bondage after freedom because of how slow news traveled. Not that it didn't, that it traveled slowly for just the mode of, tr the mode of communication back then was pass it along to the next rider until it gets to its destination. And it took two years to get from Washington DC to Galveston, Texas. Um, so anyway, I really appreciated Nisi Lynn's explanation. It, it helped me to release my frustration over the sudden holiday and not being able to do all the work. I think I've caught up from having one day off and one day out of the office running business errands. So two days, two days, I think I've finally caught up which is challenging. Uh, I also watched The Stitchy Reader, Coco Creates, uh, and I hope she's supposed to have surgery on June 25th, which is today. Um, but she's ahead of me by like eight hours. She's in, in Great Britain. So hopefully her surgery has already happened and was successful and she, I hope she recovers well and quickly. Um, and then finally, I just found, and I haven't completed the video cause I needed to come tape, um, uh, Emma Rose, Emma Rose Makes, um, is got her very first floss tube up. So that's who I've been watching over the last couple of weeks. Uh, some familiar faces and some new faces. On my last few videos, I've had some commenters and I wanna thank my viewers that have commented. I enjoy seeing your comments and responding. Uh, Rainy Day Reads, Geneva Clark, Long Dog Stitcher and Allegro Stitches, thank you for your wonderful and thoughtful comments. It's really appreciated. Um, so then we'll do whips. I have been, unlike May, for June, I've been doing a more focused, um, stitch. I joined probably in April. April or so is when I probably found the group. But I joined, excuse me, uh, a Facebook story game called Crystal Academy. It's a little bit like Harry Potter, you know, you go Harry Potter in terms of you're going to magic school and your stitching helps you learn or master spells and there's um, some various things. So I came in 
in the middle of a semester and just kind of observed and looked around and they have just started semester three and this go around we had to pick six up to six whips that we were going to work on and assign them to a specific subject out of the six subjects um we had to assign our whips to a specific subject that had um time frame so because this goes till November looking at the dates I I picked a lot of my whips based on um, holidays and t specific times that they fell in that the stitching time for that course that subject fell into and then we have extra credit and so for extra credit I decided that I was going to work on my pen pal stitches and a lot of my smalls or nearly finished stitches and get those knocked out instead of focusing on another one of my bigger stitches that has time. So um, June 10th and 11th, I worked on my pen pal stitch and then waiting for the semester to start, I pulled out and worked on Lady of the Flag. Um, I had a lot of this done, but I did a good chunk of fill-in work right in here. So I'm going in and filling in the dress and um, getting, you know, just getting this more completed. Um, I'll put, as always, I'll put a picture of where I was before. Uh, this is a piece of fabric that I dyed. You can't see much, but, you know, that's the center. I started at the center and I'm working my way down. Couple of reasons. First, I wasn't 100% sure how she would fit on the fabric. How much of, I knew I had close to three inches margin, but I didn't want her to end up being off kilter. So I decided center start would for this piece, even though I'm normally a top left start, would be a good, a good idea. Second, it allowed me to delay working on my skin conversion. Um, I'm planning on doing uh, one over one for the skin in addition to doing one over one, um, I need to go back and re-watch, but I have seen a couple of videos where there is a silk skin tone conversion. It's, it's not an official conversion, but it's kind of a, here's how I convert the skin to one over one silk. Um, and so I have to still have to get the silk for that. Um, so I don't have this, the silk for the skin. I need to figure out, get a little more straight in my, in my mind, how they do the conversions to stitch it one over one and how they pick, you know, what, what they do if they just, you know, recommend doing a gradient or not. So those were the kind of two driving forces between starting in the middle and working and doing the whole bottom half first um, was that number one, I wanted it to be as close to centered as possible on my fabric. And number two, the top half has a lot of skin and I don't have the stuff for the skin yet. So that was, that was my 
12th and 13th. Then on the 14th, Crystal Academy officially started. And my first project, uh, my first subject was letters from mom. And to complete that subject, you had to stitch a total of 750 stitches. So you're stealing my needle minder again. This metal table is not very useful if you have a needle minder on it. Get back on there. So previously I had only stitched the border. Um, so I got letter in, it needs an S. Uh, and then I got the start of this floral medallion and a leaf. Um, I basically, I'm kind of working across and down all at the same time. Um, and some of it's driven by, I don't want to move the frame yet. So let me put in a different color um, because I basically got to the boundaries of my Q snap with the with the lace edging. Uh, so that's that was my 750 stitches was getting my lace edging to the boundaries and putting in um, that little bit of detail. Then my extra credit work, I'm going to be making a name banner for my nephew for his bulletin board. And I had started it and knew that with school starting in August, I had limited time to finish stitching plus actually finish finish. And I also have two little animals to stitch for him for the ends. So it'll be his name in the middle and then on the end, the end banner piece will be um, a dog resembling his dog and then also a white fox slash wolf. He told me it looked like a wolf. I think it's called a white fox. He liked it. I'm stitching it. Come back here. So, for my extra credit in Crystal Academy, this was my focus. And I have two L's, two I's, because his name includes two L's and two I's. A C, an O, an H, uh, an N, and a K. Um, for the Duplicate letters, so, so the L came with a fan as the design. This is the original design. And then I wanted to try to not have every, you know, the duplicate, like not have it be all the same images. Uh, so the C has two, two little fans then the L had a big fan and a bunch of the other letters also were fan were his name just happened to have a majority of the letters included a fan. And so I looked at some of the other letters and their designs and in the end, this one is the original design. Let me flip the eyes around so they're right side up. This one is the original design. And then I grabbed a, the mirror image um, was patterned in the greens and yellows. So I did that. Um, the H came with a fan. So I pulled in the crane. Uh, The N came with a fan, so I grabbed the cherry blossoms. O came with the temple. And then the second L 
Um, none of the other ones had the Chinese or paper lantern. And so I, I grabbed uh, a paper lantern and did that. So I'm gonna cut, and this is why they're upside down. I'm gonna cut them so that they have a triangle point at the um, below the image. And then I still need to go to the store and find, you know, my backing fabric. Um, I'm, I'll take this with me and see what I see what I find. But I'm kind of thinking. He said his favorite colors right now are black and red, and I thought that the variegated for his name for the initials was a red to black. It's just a really really dark red, um, and so I'm thinking I will look for a. Um, maybe a brocade, something that's kind of brocadey, so still still has that Asian inspired theme, in with a with black as the dominant color uh, for the backing, and then um, to separate. So I just did his last initial. I didn't do his full full last name because then his name's going to be ginormous um and so I thought to separate his name and the the last initial I would do one of the banner points um there and probably one on either end that was um the fabric to, so that it's not just the backing it's you also see it a little bit um I'll be playing with the finishing design. I also stitch on projects when it's their anniversary birthday. And guess what came up in having an anniversary birthday? Pandemic. Now, none of this is what I stitched on the 23rd because I moved the frame. I'm like, hey, let's see if I can get the frame to go all the way to the end. Nope. I have 40 more stitches past where I'll stitch. So down in the bottom corner, and I'll put a before and after picture. I finished stitching as much as my frame would allow on the diagonal here. Then I moved my frame and went Hey, it's late. Let's go to bed. And realized that that was going to be a problem when I videoed for showing. So this week is a land that I love. So yesterday, after the uh, Zoom conference that for a committee I'm on that took up my evening and after going to the eye doctor. Yesterday was busy. There was no time to video. Even though normally I videotape on Thursdays and post, post overnight while I'm sleeping. So usually I videotape when I get home from work on Thursday and then edit it and by the time I go to bed, I can upload it. Not yesterday. I went straight from work to the eye doctor. That took two hours. Got back and had about an hour to finish up some writing work, editing for my committee meeting, of which I'm the secretary. And then jumped into the committee meeting and then because I'm going more full force into wedding planning, finalizing, crafting and all that in the next couple weeks, I was like, okay, y'all need to do the rest of the edit, you know, any editing we discussed tonight, 
I can't do any till after the wedding. Uh, I can take a look, quick look and see if I see things to correct, but I can't do all this editing and drafting and, and whatnot. Don't have time, not for the next little while. Because I need to cross stitch a little bit every day or I go a little crazy. I don't literally go crazy, but it drives me. I am not as relaxed. Like stabbing this lets me release whatever frustrations or irritants I have with the world. Add to that, I need to finish any and everything with the wedding and the person that was going to do the cake in April is not available for my date, my new date. So now I gotta find a new cake vendor. I have a backup. They're just not in the same area as the venue. So it means they're, they're where I live. So it means I have to pick the cake up and take it. I don't really wanna do that on the wedding day. But I will if I have to. Um, so I've got to touch base with people who live in that, in the area of our venue and see if they have any cake recommendations. And then I have to contact them to see if they're available on my date and can consult. So after I did all of that, it was nine or 10 o'clock at night. So I pulled this out. I did 150 stitches. That's it. The 150 stitches was this flower and I've got a little mistake and I'm not pulling it out. So if you look at the one up there, up here, you'll see that there's a little stitch not actually stitched in the corner of the white. I wasn't paying attention. I made it square. So I didn't leave out the little corner stitch that's right there. Um, so this one will be different. By the time this piece is finished and framed, you'd have to really, really be OCD to find that little error. And I, I don't mind minuscule personalization. Like if, if it's a really, really off and I look at the pattern and go, okay, how does it, if I find a, an error, especially one that requires me to rip out a bunch of stuff, I will look at the pattern and go, okay, is it something I can fudge? And make it work or is this gonna be a domino compounding effect uh, so like to go back to pandemic briefly on this piece when I imported it into pattern keeper because it's not a hundred percent pattern keeper compatible you have to be a little more attentive to it well it looked like it imported correctly. So I started stitching. And let's see. Now it's all in the, it's all wrapped up in the Q snap. So, or actually, no, it's not. It's hidden right here. So, right in here, this bird is, is actually mirror imaged on the other side of the motif and that that motif the bird had two rows on his body and you know so i'd stitched that bird already but because i'm stitching on the diagonal i'm enjoying watching things come to life on this piece but i'm not 
so laser focused on the various elements that I'm say stitching all the birds and so when I stitch one if there's an issue with the import in the middle of another bird I'm gonna see it no because of the way I'm stitching I didn't realize that the second row was completely missing all the way down and it happens to be an overlap area and for whatever reason even though I put the correct number of rows in for the overlap it did not import correctly. It lost an entire column. And it was actually this repeat that I was filling in and I'm looking at it and right up in here, it was just weird. It was like there was a missing stitch. And when I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it, I finally was like, you know what? I've somehow lost a column. So I went and re-imported it and got it so that it was, it was correct. But then I had to decide what was I going to do. And in this case, first of all, I had, because of stitching on the diagonal, I had probably at least over a thousand stitches that I would have to rip out. Add to that, I'm stitching one over one on 28 count. That's painful to tear out. And I knew my piece was extra long and I hadn't cut off the excess. So I flipped it around and started over because that was going to be, yes, I could fudge it where it was, where the mistake currently was. Uh, I could go in and add a, a stitch where it looked funny, make it look right. Um, leave my bird a little skinny, but it was one of those things that the missing column continuing all the way down the pay, all the pages because um, it's it's five pages high I think or four pages high and five across no I think it's five five high it's 20 odd pages total so it would have continued all the way down through every single element and that same missing column was at every single page overlap. So I would have had four or five rows, columns on the vertical that were missing and I would have had to fudge. And it's like, no, I'm not fudging all this. I will restitch the 6,000 stitches I've already stitched before I found this error. So I did, I restarted it. Um, all that to say for this piece, I don't mind that this flower has a t an extra stitch that makes it square instead of giving it a mini tulip effect. That's what it kind of looks like to me with the mi missing stitch. Um, I don't mind that. I'm not gonna pull out the six stitches that's literally what it is it's the bottom six stitches to fix one um i'll leave my little tiny person personalization so this is so the flower and the bee and the sea are what i did last night um, before going to bed 150 stitches but i mean most days if i can get 25 or 50 in, that's enough to relax and calm me. If I've touched my stitching, I'm good. Um, plans. Uh, this week started Land That I Love, so I'll finish 
Uh, I have 150 of the stitches. I need 750 to finish the class. Uh, I have through next week to, to do that because you get two weeks. I'll have it done this weekend. Uh, I'll probably have it done tomorrow. Um, then I'll go back to my extra credit smalls. Um, so the next piece is I, I'll probably finish, uh, up, um, a pen pal stitch that I need to finish up. Um, and then the final bit to my nephew's, uh, bulletin board banner is to stitch the two animals. Um, so I have that. I also, for smalls, need to stitch the piece that I'm going to put into my guest book. So yeah, I have all those, a whole mess of smalls that I need to do. Um, and so just keep knocking my way through them. Next Monday, Crystal Academy starts the class that I've assigned to Lady of the Flag because it goes through July 4th. Um, and it also over or the second round of classes is um, over 9-11. And that's what, uh, and my, my piece is, I said, I think I said land that I love. It's not land that I love that starts next week. It's Lady of the Flag. Um, so I'll go back to my lady of the flag. Um, she'll get 750 stitches minimum put in her, um, uh, around the 4th of July. And then, uh, she'll come back up again during the 9-11 week. And I, I put her there because when I first saw the pattern, I thought of New York and 9-11. Uh, I wasn't in New York, but that is a day that I will never forget. Um, it was, I, at the time I was doing after school daycare, we heard it on the radio we went home while the kids were in school and we watched on the television as the, I think it was the second tower came crashing down. And then the school called and said, we need to have a powwow. And we get there thinking we're going to be talking about how to t explain and support the kids over the terrorist attack. And we find out that one of our students had been killed in a car accident over the weekend. So we had a double whammy to tell our kids. Um, we had to tell them that their very good friend was not coming back ever. Um, and we had to be very PC about the fact that it was a bad decision by a parental figure that caused his death. Um, you know, how, when a kid asks, why did my friend die in the car accident it's real rough to be have to tell them you know you, you you need to be prepared for how to answer that question and everybody needs to have the same story or the same explanation because it's a rough thing it's 10 times worse when a parent's bad choice leads to the car accident that took their kid's life. Um, and we tried not to tarnish 
his memory. Um, we also know that kids can be, especially if they're not super knowledgeable about what something is, knowledgeable meaning first-hand experience, kids can say things without meaning to hurt that hurt. And this student had siblings that were in other grades. Um, and so the siblings still had to come to school. So even though we may not have approved of the parents' choice, and the consequences of that. And we knew that we, we recognized that it didn't change anything to give the kids a lot of specifics. So, you know, our classroom, terrorist attack, what's that? My friend is dead. Um, you know, so we had, we had the double whammy. I think we were dealing with a lot more emotions uh, from the terrorist attack than than our students were um but we had to you know we had to figure find a balance to manage our own emotional challenges and then be because so much came to a screeching halt for a short time parents were laid off they were pulling their kids out so 9 11 did affect our kids it's I will never forget where I was. And when I saw the lady of the flag, all these years later, it went on my unicorn list. And I thought there's never going to be a day where one will come up that I can afford. And then one did. So I grabbed it. Um, and I started it and, um, and I fully intend to stitch her a few times. And then, the pattern will make its way out into the university. Uh, I'm actually making that one for my sister. She picked the color. I said, what color would you would you pick? And she picked that one in the fabric. Um, so Lady of the Flag will be worked on over uh, the weeks that encompass July 4th and then also the 9-11 weeks. And then I have some f things that I need to finish, um, including getting the sampler completely framed um, and all the wedding stuff that I need to do. So I'm going to segue into haul. I should first say I'm going to segue into Stitchy Kindness. So I have a pen pal in England and I got the quarterly package. And all I did was open the top. <laughs> so we'll, we'll all see this together. Uh, chocolate. It's not a brand that we have out here in California. So I will be trying this Galaxy, Galaxy Chocolate. And then Cadbury Chocolate. And <laughs> she stitched the cutest little wedding card for us. It's just adorable. There's usually several stitchy pieces. So this one is Easter. And This one, is, this is just a pretty little card. Bees and sunflowers and, and 
then she a little pencil case it's got paper clips magnifying glass pencil it's a cute little case and a couple packages of thread <laughs> happy bee little ornament And then the letter, which I'll read later. So that was my stitchy kindness for my pen pal. I need to take myself a, a hiatus from some of the stash unloading. Yeah, I got some stash unloading. I got some stash unloading. I thought I was ordering from two people because I didn't pay attention. There's two different like albums. It was great because you combine the shipping on, just put them all together in one package. But I got some old patterns. So I got Me Ladies Needle, Quaker Christmas Smalls. Those are very cute. And at least three of them look like they're probably done with either a variegated or some something monotone you know monochromatic which means that I can dig into my dyeing for cross stitch silks and stitch with that um my brother-in-law is a firefighter and I saw this and it's the whole kit so that's cool I have no idea when I'll stitch it for him. Uh, this is Box Clever. And it's got a whole bunch of these boxes. And it tells you, like, after you stitch all the, all the pieces, how, you, how to put them together. So you can, like, make your own boxes. Um, or just stitch the various little pieces. Uh, they've got them as ornaments and cards and things like that. Uh, Dre Colère Creations Celtic Jeweled Cross. Another kit, oh, it's a wizard's ornament. Happy New Year with a shoe and this little kit. Um, this one is Victorian Lace Fancy Work and Fantasies. It's got a lot of specialty stitches in it. Um, but it's got good diagrams in it too. So like Smyrna crosses, step by step. How do you do them? Um, the vertical leaf stitch. So, you know, all these crazy weird stitches that are really cool. Um, and, it, and it has it where you can do it as nine little blocks make a little patchwork or they also have this one where you do like a monogram an initial they have a whole initial alphabet uh, with a rose and then specialty stitches all the way around the edges for the borders so I saw that and I just thought I like I like the look of specialty stitches I liked the design this one, since I was getting other stuff, had to come to my house because my in-laws have two of the dogs in this book. I may do portraits of their dogs. My, my father-in-law loves German short hair pointers. And then they've got a, their most recent set they've got Brittany. 
I'm like, it, it's a location in the world. Couldn't think of it. Um, Jeanette Douglas designs a New England autumn. I see a lot of, and this one also has a bunch of specialty stitches with a diagram. I see a lot of uh, patterns that are more Halloween than autumn. And I'm not being a big Halloween person. Most of the time I'm like, eh, no. Um, this is a piece designed by Diane Arthur's it looks like it's published by Imaginating Incorporated. It's Old Irish Blessing. And it says, May you have warm words on a cold evening, a full moon on a dark night, and the road downhill all the way to your door. This is the Victoria Sampler, a precious gift baby sampler. And it has... It done as a little envelope as well. A little envelope pouch. Apparently I'm very much into the specialty stitches at the moment in my designs because that one has specialty stitches. Um, cross stitch. This is Annie's cross stitch. Cross stitch mini Christmas stocking ornaments. Apparently, I'm on a Christmas ornament theme as well. One of them. Um, this is published by Fond Memories, Stitches and Switches, Summertime. And they, they have the section that would be cut out for, excuse me, cut out for the switch designed as well so it's like it's not like oh if you decide to do this as say an ornament you've got this blank rectangle in the middle of it no they have the f design filled in so that you can they don't show any of them done without being switches um and it uses the Fond Memories acrylic switch plates. I'm like, okay, didn't know such thing existed. This one is published by Counted Thread Cross Stitch, designed by Judith M. Kirby. It's Victorian Houses. And I live in the Bay Area, so that one caught my eye. Well, those caught my eye, the bridge and the cable car. Then, this one is, I think it's Great Bear Canada. A new Celtic series. A house is made of walls and beams. A home is made of love and dreams. So, there. And it, they actually give you three different color variations. So they give you the shown one, which is spice colors, a soft and natural colors, and then deep jewel tones, along with recommendations for fabric colors and all of that. Leisure Arts, Pooh Baby Bibs. I don't see much that's Winnie the Pooh and those don't have to be on bibs. They could be, but they don't have to be. I enjoy Winnie the Pooh. In addition to Pooh Baby Bibs, they also had the Disney catalog, Winnie the Pooh Birth Sampler. Uh -oh. There's some slight markings on the pattern. I can live with that. 
This one is T. Spohannon Creations. It's Elizabeth II, sailing ship. And then a couple of books. Victorian Cross Stitch by Vanessa Ann. Doesn't say what her last name is. Just calls it the best Vanessa Ann collection. Um, it was published by the Joys of Cross Stitch. I'll have to take some pictures and do maybe a slideshow from it. Um, this one I could show you. So it's got all kinds of things, but like this one is almost completely beating. Um, which is cool. So it's got a variety of things in it. And then also from the Vanessa Ann collection is the A to Z cross stitch samplers. And that's the back. Um, some of it might need to be, you know, updated a little but I mean that's got some pretty cool leaf work it's got a really cool letter so the alpha uh, for the C um, this I could see in a kid's room if they were horse mad don't look back and it, it literally is a B C so so like that one was for the letter D don't look back and then they've got Z is zippity doodah. So they've got 26 samplers in here. There's gotta be, a, there, there's at least one or two that, you know, somebody would enjoy. That was my stash unloading haul. And then the obligatory one, two, three stitch order came today. Um, I got a notification that a design I had been looking for was back in stock and I wasn't about to wait until it went back out of stock to go looking at it. So I jumped in there and I also needed for land that I love when I was going through my stash, I determined that I was missing, um, I was missing blue corn completely, um, which actually it goes, it connects all these elements here. So it like connects in here, it connects all of these elements to one another. Uh, so it intertwines in, in the border. Um, it's the first place that I found it. And of course I didn't have it. Um, so, the fully kitted project I thought I had was not fully kitted. So I got myself, I think it said it needed two. I got an extra skein. Um, and then Havana, I had just the amount called for. And after running out of, nearly running out of emerald on my sampler, I've decided that an extra skein from what's called for is not a bad thing on these specialty flosses. So I ordered an extra one. 
And then I had dolphin, but dolphin called for three and I only had two. So I got my third one and a spare. So those all go with land that I love. I had another design that has been needing 977 for forever. Um, and my store has not carried it for forever. Uh, it's like, okay, I kitted this thing up back at, during the pandemic, the early days of the pandemic, because I started it last May. No 977. So it's been on my shopping list and I looked this time when I ordered from 123 Stitch, I looked at my shopping list and went, I'm gonna get the 977. So, the pattern that started this whole order, Let It Snow by Barbara Anna. Not fond of snow, but that's an awfully cool pair of scissors with snowflakes. I don't mind looking at snow. I just don't want to live in it. And then, it's been on my list for a good long while, and that's Glendon Place uh, Flowers of the Holy Night. I'm pretty sure I was enabled by this one, enabled with this one by um, Stitchy Reader, maybe? I don't know. She's getting married this next or this month or she got married ends in medical school and she had gotten the pattern and showed it and I was like that is totally cool so I threw that one in it's been sitting there for a while and then I was like well if Glendon Place can have such a cool poinsettia what else do they have so I got another Glendon Place called Pretty Pumpkins and those are pretty pumpkins. And then I've started the kidding process for Flowers of the Holy Night. In that, recommended treasures, treasure beads. Uh, I have a decent stash of regular Mill Hill seed beads, so I will look through those before I can kit up the rest of it. Um, I was watching a floss tube video and I'll have to look it up. I made a note somewhere. Cause it's been almost two weeks since I fell down that rabbit hole. The person was starting an, a stitch along by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery for the Cozy Cafe Club. So I got the Cozy Cafe Club I don't normally do full kits, but this time around I did a cute little pattern bonus came in. It's all tied up nice and neat. It came with all the floss, um, packet of boa needles, which I've never tried. I really like my um, easy glides, but that doesn't mean I can't try the bow and needles. Um, packets of beads. Beading needles. So 
Got all the packets of beads that you'll need. There's not that many beads in there. And then it's also got a uh, picture of this plus Cashel 28. Says Opalus. Says Opal, but that doesn't look Opal to me. Doesn't look opal to me. I'll have to contact them and find out if opal means something else in their tag. Um, could be the color. And I'm just used to opal meaning opalescent. So, you know. Considering it's Cozy Cafe, which the little motifs have been various cafe drinks. Um, I think we're on the second or third one released. But I haven't started yet because I just got the kit. And I have five million things I'm going to do. But I have it when I'm ready to start. Um, so yes, this was... An enabled purchase and it was a purchase that along with being enabled to purchase it I'd say within a day of purchasing it I would seen at least two floss tubes that had this project going so that is all my whips um, I have one more little success that I wanted to share I wanted to turn my craft paper brown sign-in book green and I'm stitching a motif from the sampler to put in the middle so I didn't I I wanted it to you know be available so I took the piece of the picture that was on there and I put it over top of the plastic hoping that I would be able to wiggle it it free and all that um, my hope is and this may not work I may end up having to just stick it in there. Um, but my hope is that I can put this on top of the design and wiggle it down in. I hope, I don't know, it may not work. Um, or get the design in and then pull the plastic over top of it. Um, and if neither of that works, then I'll pull the plastic out and I will spray paint the middle green. But it was an idea that I wasn't sure if it would work and it did. And now I got to, you know, got to stitch the centerpiece. Once it's done and ready to go, put the whole thing back together. So that's one of my small projects that has got some urgency on it because I've got six weeks six weeks to the day. I will sign off now. Uh, you all have a wonderful weekend and 4th of July. Don't know if I will be recording before the 4th of July has passed. Um, if you're in another country and your country doesn't celebrate America's Independence Day, have a good weekend, couple of weekends, and I will see you in a few weeks.